Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. <laughs> Dell challenges the status quo, questions everything, and empowers you to return to your core beliefs to make your life better. If you're ready to hear the truth and get your roadmap to the lifestyle you really want, the next hour will change your life. And now your host, self-made millionaire, national award-winning investor of the year, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. To be financially free, folks, you're going to have to be able to make good decisions. To make good decisions, you're going to need information. As you out there look for information, the reality is is that there are all kinds of people trying to give you all kinds of ideas. Why? Because they're trying to sell you something. And with that in mind, you have to realize you're going to have to be able to read through their scripts and then look at and overview the concept of of the rest of the world and parallel those ideas together and come up with the one you believe actually is true or more true or closest to the truth, however you want to look at it, because, you know, there's always two sides to every story. However, there is also two sides to this story. A very high percentage of Lifestyles Unlimited members are retired. A very high percentage of Lifestyles members are rich. Both of which cases, they came to lifestyles neither rich nor anywhere near retirement. Now, those kinds of numbers and those kinds of percentages are pretty unusual. When you look at the fact that the National Apartment Association has a contest each year for the best independent owner, um, and there's like 44,000 independent owners in the National Apartment Association, that award has been won by both locally, statewide, and nationally, we have members, not me, but members. I won it the first year, but then after that, uh, I started sending my members to it. We have won, one of our members has won that contest 13 years in a row. What does that mean? They're the best individual investor running the best property owned by an individual investor uh, out there. In the country. So the bottom line is, is that these are all good numbers. What do they mean to you? What it means to you is that you're looking at working for the rest of your life until you're 50, 60, 70, even 80 years of age. People are working now. It means that you'll never, ever be in that position where you have enough money to do whatever you want. What does it mean to have enough money to do whatever you want? It means to have enough money that not only do you sleep well at night, that you know you're financially secure, but it means weird things, right? Strange things, because I come from middle class. I don't come from wealth. I don't want people to come from doctors and lawyers and have gone to ultimate colleges and so forth. I'm just a regular middle class person like you. But what is it? that I'm so extremely happy about in my life? Is it the fact that I have more money than I'll ever spend? No, that's not really it. Um, Is it the fact that I haven't had to work since I was 34 years of age? And take that with tongue in cheek. I mean, I work at Lifestyles Unlimited to bring this material to you, right? Um, What does it mean? It means that I would normally teach one seminar a month, but now... I haven't taught one last month. I'm not teaching one this month. Um, It's the ability to say, I just, I don't want to. I don't need to. You know, the company runs without me. I do it because I'm interested in it. And because I had a broken leg, I said, I'm not interested. I don't want to do it. So I'm not going to go to any of the events. In fact, I skipped two or three national events. And, uh, you know, I would have loved to go to them, but it just wasn't worth the pain. So to be able to do that and know that not one less cent will hit my checking account, Uh, because all of my passive investments just keep paying me and paying me and paying me because I don't need to work at a job to get paid. That's a beautiful thing. But what other kinds of weird things is it? There's lots of weird things about having money. Uh, I'll give you an example. I've got a gigantic house. Some would call it a mansion. I wouldn't really call it a mansion, but it's 16,000 square foot, got 20-car garage, 
It's got a $500,000 backyard, wet area, swimming pool, koi ponds, nature area, gazebo, outdoor kitchens. I mean, it's got everything. Fountains. It's got the whole bit. Really nice. And, and so I, I brought people here uh, to let them experience it and to share it with them and have parties. And that was really cool. It's always fun to, to have your friends over and give back and share things with them. That was really nice. Uh, but what's weird is, is that buying the house wasn't the problem. Matt, my dad told me this back when I was a kid. He said, Dell, it's not what it costs to buy something. It's what it costs to maintain. And boy, was he right. You know, to maintain the two and a half acres of landscaping that I have on this house cost me more than it cost me to have a landscape company take care of my apartment complex's landscape. Yes, my house costs more than any apartment complex I've ever had for landscaping. It's better, it's nicer, it's more expensive, it costs more to do it. And so every year, you know, I get these ridiculous bills. Okay, these plants died. We got to tear these out, put some new ones in. Boom. You know, this grass died. This over here has got whatever. We got to do this to it and treat it, whatever. Boom. You know, mowing the yard is $95 a week. That's just to mow the yard. That isn't to landscape the yard. And so you get weird bills. And I've sitting here looking at these bills. I'm going, yeah, do I really need to change the flowers out in all the flower beds, you know, and spend $1,500 to do that? Do I really need to replace uh, some dead plants because they froze and pull them all out and re-landscape and some dead grass and pull it out and reach and all this? And, you know, and that's like $3,200. And I'm sitting here going like, gosh. And then I think about it. Dell, that's nothing. The money that comes in every single month from all of your passive investments are way, 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 way more net. You know, at the same time, while all that's going on, you got a situation where you've got family coming up for, you know, the holidays and so forth. And in the family situation, you've got the desire to go somewhere, right? And so, you know, the wife comes up to me and says, you know, we want to go travel to the family this year. And I said, oh, gosh, okay, you know how it is. It's just you're going to go to somebody else's house. It's never that fun to go to somebody else's house. It's whatever. I said, but, you know, the one thing is I'll do it, obviously, if that's what the family's doing. But I'm going to fly first class. I'm not, I'm not going to go in. And, we don't need to fly first class. It's just blah, blah. I go, I'm going to fly first class. I've never flown first class until about a year ago. And then a year ago, I realized I had more money than I'd ever spend the rest of my life. And I started going, boy, this is stupid. Why don't I take and use some of that money while I'm around? Why leave it all to her and the world, and the kids? You know, I worked hard to get it. I created the asset. Now the asset will keep producing forever. They will have money forever if they just don't mess with the asset, right? And I said, so why not start spending it? And even when I do spend it, I don't spend even as much as I earn in a month. I earn as much in a month as most people that are very well paid earn in a year. So you figure that one out however you want. And uh, when that money comes in, because all the real estate I own, almost all that money ends up being tax-free. Because of the excess depreciation I have and because we're real estate professionals and that's what we do for a living, uh, we're able to get that money tax-free. So here we are in a situation, guys, where I'm sitting here and I'm thinking to myself, gosh, 30 years ago, I started buying real estate. At the time, I thought it was a great idea. I was really excited about it. And it was working. And it got me out of corporate America. About two and a half years after I started, I had enough cash flow to replace my personal income. In fact, actually, was more than what I was making as far as take home. What I was taking home now tax free was more than what I was taking home after taxes working. After two and a half years, I had accumulated massive amounts of assets. And I thought I'd made it because I could retire. But I found that the retirement was only the first step because the real estate continued to grow in value. And as it grew in value, my assets became larger. I was able to take those assets and reinvest them, redeploy them. And as my assets got redeployed, my income got larger. And as my income got larger, I had no use for it. You pay everything cash when you're rich, so you have no debt. 
any, anywhere other than that on your properties. And that debt you don't pay because it's paid by the investment. So there you are. There you have it. What do you do? You just make more money. More money each and every year. We'll take a short break. Be right back with the Dell Walmsley Radio Show. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Uh, During the first segment today, I was just talking randomly about, you know, how strange it is to be very, very wealthy. But the point I was going to get to, and I kind of wandered around there for a while, was that 30 years ago, I started this journey. And now the journey has led to some unbelievable results. And hindsight, they say, is twenty twenty, but I don't really think it is. You know, there's a saying that I think is really important. It says, he who doesn't learn from history uh, tends to repeat history. So here's history. I've showed you what 30 years did for me and many, many other Lifestyles members and the successes they've had. There's the history. And are you going to repeat that? Or are you going to look to your family's history to where your family members worked their entire lives, um, lived the life of quiet desperation, got to the end of the life of quiet desperation, found out they still had to work. They didn't have enough to retire. If they did, they had to live in a very impoverished manner. Um, And then they die. It's all over with. There was never end to it all. There was never a good times. Uh, you know, there's you know, a couple Christmases you really were happy. But, I mean, as far as the life, you never really had a fulfilling life. And so you look at that and say, well, Del, that's, a, that's an, a really mean, rude, disrespectful thing to say. I had a fulfilling life. Well, just think how much more fulfilling it would be if you had a couple million or 10 or 20 million to throw at it. Think of the charity work you could have done. Think of what you could have done for your children. Think of where you could have gone and traveled and things you could have done to be more fulfilled, to be more fulfilling for other people, to help other people. But you don't have it because why? Because you didn't take the action. Well, today I'm going to try to change your mind. And I'm going to try to show you that you're going to go, oh, that was you. That was during the recessions. That was during the this, the that. Guys, there's been multiple recessions since I started. Real estate has gone up and down and up and down and up and down. But the reality is it just keeps going up. And I'm going to give you information and data today to prove to you it's going to continue to go up. And if you're not involved in it, then you're going to lose. You're going to lose because assets, pure assets, are something the average person doesn't have. Rich people have assets. Poor people have jobs. If you had enough assets that could earn money for you and you had them deployed correctly, you would not need a job. You have a job because you don't have assets. Back uh, when I was 34 years old, myself and some partners have put up capital for me. We bought around uh, 100 different houses, and they were single-family duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, that kind of stuff. And the average unit cost was about $30,000. We bought some for much lower than that, and we bought some for more than that. But the average cost was about $30,000. So that comes out to $3 million. We had to put 20% down. That's about $600,000. Now, fast forward 30 years later. Those 30 houses are worth more like 200000 bucks. The median price in Houston right now is $240,000. Um, and these were median price type homes when I bought them. And so... In this day and age, they're probably worth you know two hundred thousand dollars. Probably not two hundred fifty, but two hundred. They're small homes, and so that makes the net value of all of them about twenty million dollars. Now we put in three million, right? We bought them for three. They're now worth twenty. That means we made seventeen million dollars. And this is if we had no cash flow. But we did. We had massive cash flow. I'm not even counting the cash flow in. I'm just saying, what if you just bought these assets, and even if all they did was break even, right? 
even after you paid somebody to manage them all and maintenance, repair, and expenses, and taxes, insurance, and everything else, and you just hand it off to somebody else to run, 30 years later, they're worth $20 million. That's a $17 million gain. $17 million on a $600,000 investment is a 94% a year return. Now, did you get or ever see anything like that? That's just unbelievable. That's the power of real estate, and that's the power of leverage. It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal rate of return. So, let's say the return's much less. Let's say the return. It really doesn't matter what the actual rate of return is. Going from a $600,000 investment to owning a $20 million asset, right? Owning a $20 million asset. Do you think you're going to be able to retire? Obviously, you're going to be able to retire, but even more than that, you're going to be rich. You got $17 million net worth. So, irrespective of the return, and forget about the return because it's not really even the return because we didn't count any of the cash flow in. So, just drop the return. Let's not make a claim about the return. Let's just say this Do you think that that's going to happen again? Do you think house prices are going up? Well, in 2008, we had a recession, right? We had everything went kapooey. Median price homes were selling for 152,000 back in 2008 in Houston, Texas, and now they're worth 241 thousand dollars. So 2008, that's 11 years, 11, 10, 11 years. They've gone from 150 to 240, 90 thousand dollars. Wow, that's like a 50 percent return. 50 percent return in 10 years. What do you think they're going to be in 30 years? Maybe 150%? Or go back to the 94. Maybe it's only 94% return. Who knows? But the bottom line is, it's going to go up, and it's going to go up a lot. And if you don't have assets, what's going to happen to you? What happens to your kids that don't own homes right now? Do they get? Are they a part of any of that appreciation and equity growth? No. When they end up like, like you wake up, one day, let's say all you did was buy my home, it was built for three million, three and a half million, I think, and I bought it for two and a half million. I bought it on a fire sale from a guy who had to get rid of it, about one year old, so it was almost brand new. And let's say you hold on to that, and now it's worth seven, eight, nine million dollars down the line when you get ready to retire. One home could retire you. In the long run. And that's what they used to tell people, which is really ridiculous, because that's really not the way we do it. We don't try to buy the largest home we can, although that's what they used to say. Buy as large a home as you can, make payments on it. By the time you retire, you have a massive piece of equity and asset and so forth. But the bottom line is, is it going to go up again is the question. And I've got a bunch of material here that's going to prove to you that it will. The first one's a Wall Street Journal article. It says, people are staying in their homes longer, a big reason for slower sales. Now, by the way, this article is pointed at it's a negative that people are staying in their homes longer. It's a negative because now there's no homes for sale, and so people can't buy homes. Now, think about what they're saying. Gosh, this is terrible. There's no homes for people to buy because people won't sell them. And then I'm going to go through the whole article and show you why. But I want you to understand the premise. If people won't sell those older, cheaper homes, then how do entry-level people get a home? Right? They don't. How do old people that want to downsize from their McMansion down to a small home get a home? They don't. And so people stay. And if people stay, there's no homes on the market. You compound the problem. And now what do you got? You now have working-class people living in rentals. That's it. And we own all the rentals. We'll be right back with the Dell Walmsley Radio Show. Some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Now, from the files of Del Wamsley, 
Sometimes we overlook some assets that we have that can be used to invest in property. Here, Dell offers advice about using 401k funds to generate passive income. I have a lady that wrote me and said, uh, when I talk about 10 to 12% in earnings in investment, is that monthly or yearly? Maybe I'm not even asking the question correctly, but I hope you can lead me on this. You see, I have a retirement account, but cannot get it unless I quit my job, which would not bother me at all, except that I'm the breadwinner and must have income. If it's not monthly income that I would get from the investment, then I'm considering getting a loan on our place, which is paid off. That'd be their personal residence. And I am at the crossroads here, and I'm looking for some direction. I'm a member but do not know what to do. Thank you for all you do. Looking forward to your answer. Well, I, I wrote back to her and said, um, she has $189,000 in a retirement account. If she took that out, she'd lose about 30% of it. And so she'd have a little less, about 132,000 is what I came up with. And then she says she can borrow $100,000 out of her house. So that would give her a total $232,000 to invest. Now, I always tell you, if done correctly, real estate investing can earn you a cash flow of somewhere between um, 10 and 20% cash flow, annualized. That's an annual return, not a monthly return. And so for her, that would put her somewhere between $23,000 and $46,000 a year. Now, here's the deal. Let's say she's in the 25% tax bracket, and then she pays 7% Social Security, which would take her up to 32%. So if she's making 59000 and she has to pay 32% in taxes, 18000 in taxes, so 59 minus 18, and she's at $41,000 a year. She needs $41,000 a year to replace her earned income. So she'd be really close, you know, and if she could cut her cost of living a little bit, she might even be able to get down to where she could make it on these investments. Uh, on the other hand, another approach is to borrow part of the money out of the 189. 401k, you can borrow up to half of what's in there, but not to exceed $50,000. Get the home loan, right? And then have 150000 and go put something together that earns her anywhere from fifteen to $30,000 as supplemental income. And uh, then wait until she's got enough saved up again, save up a little bit more. Or until this one, if she goes buys an apartment, it can be refinanced and pull money out. But wait until she's got just a few more bucks and she can very easily get there. But she's not far away at all. And uh, she's thinking about it correctly. But the answer to the question is it is an annualized income, not a monthly income. Welcome back to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Today we're talking about hindsight being 2020 and how if you only knew that real estate was going to go up and double and triple again in the next couple of years, would you invest in it? And the answer is probably not, but I'm going to go ahead and try to sway you anyway. Uh, here's an article from the Wall Street Journal. It says U.S. homeowners are staying in the residence much longer than before, keeping a glut of housing inventory off the market, which helps explain why home sales have been sputtering. Homeowners nationwide are remaining in their homes typically 13 years, five years longer than they they did in 2010, according to a new analysis by the real estate brokerage Redfin. When owners don't trade up to larger homes for growing families or downsize when children leave, it plugs up the market. More homeowners staying put has helped cause housing inventories to dwindle to the lowest level in decades, which has also helped push up prices on homes for sale. Adjusted for population, the inventory of homes sales now near slowest ever in 37 years of record keeping according to the housing data fewer homes for sale is a big reason why even ultra low mortgage rates would love uh, record levels of home equity and a strong job market haven't jump started the sluggish housing market economists say aging baby boomers are the biggest culprit because many are staying healthier later in life and choosing not to downsize some look around at the lack of smaller, less expensive homes and are loath to get into the bidding war with their children's generation. So, guys, here's the situation. Here's a typical example. Christian Schreiber and her husband found their family of four had outgrown the 1,000-square-foot Seattle home, uh, which she bought for $140,000 a couple of decades ago. You know, decades ago. But Mrs. Schreiber's 53-year-old recruiter soon realized prices had risen so much that homes no bigger than theirs was now selling for $600,000 so they couldn't afford to upgrade. So there you go, folks. I mean, let's think about this. 
bought it for 140, it's worth 640. I see deals like this all the time. People have massive amounts of equity, but they can't sell and pull that equity out because they can't afford, they can't find something else to buy because everything has appreciated that much. Now let's take a look at the, the concept behind this. When the marketplace is so full, there's no properties to buy, who buys them? Who buys these other properties? Well, investors do. While homeowners are out there trying to find something to buy, they can't because the investors are all over the market. They're attacking the market, sucking the market dry. And with lower and lower interest rates, because that's what the Fed's doing, they're creating lower and lower interest rates so more and more people can buy houses, all they're doing is creating ease of purchase for the investors. So, again, look at this generationally, what it's going to do to our society. It's going to create the haves and have-nots. All of us that own real estate own all the assets. All of you that don't own real estate don't own any assets. Paper assets will eventually go away. The stock market will eventually crash. It's going to happen. They're already talking about it. You know, They're going to impeach Trump, and the world's going to end, and the Chinese are going to take over, and you know, Korea's going to bomb us. Whatever it is, whatever fear it is that week, that month, that year, the stock market crashes. And all the work you've done for 40, 50 years of your life, you lose 40, 50% of it in one day. You know, and you say, well, that could happen in real estate. No, it doesn't happen in real estate because we don't sell it. Didn't you just read the article with me? We don't sell this stuff. If you don't sell, the value can't go down. Right? Think about that. Now, people will lose their jobs because of recession. They won't be able to pay their home mortgages. And they will lose those homes into foreclosure. And what will we do? We will come in right behind them and buy those homes. We're not going to go foreclosed. We're not going to lose all of our money. We're not going to lose any money because we're not going to sell anything. And will it stay full and occupied to pay us rent? Absolutely. All these people that are losing their homes because their job's gone. They can't pay their mortgage. They can't go buy another home. They're going to be forced to become tenants and renters. Right? So, what happens with this? Well, if you take a look at the situation... What happens? Well, let's talk about where we're at right now. This is the executive summary, uh, U.S. Economic Watch. You know, as people make more money, as people have jobs, they want to expand their families. They want to move away from mom and dad. They want to own their own home and raise their own kids. So there's a demand, right? But if there's no demand, or if there's massive demand but no supply, to buy, or if the houses are so expensive, a first-time buyer can't afford to buy a $600,000 house, they're forced to do what? Rent. Come on, folks, put on your thinking cap. Think through this like a grown adult. Is that problem getting better or worse? Even if there's a recession, all those broke people can't afford to buy those homes back. And who will buy them all up? In fact, snap them up. Investors will. I guarantee you, if there's a recession, houses go to 50 cents on the dollar again. We will buy every single house on every single street we can find. I will get lifestyles people. We will grab them, put them in gigantic groups of people uh, that will focus on different things, and they will go out and create companies, and these companies will go out and buy all these real estate deals. Buy them all. Right Now, Lifestyles itself is a mentoring program. We are not a real estate program, but myself personally, each and every member here personally, is an investor. And as investors, they will. Lifestyles does. And I want to make that very clear. We're just a mentoring program. We train you to be able to do this. But if you're not out there with us doing it, then you're the one losing. And interest rates are low again. So as investors, we're sitting here going, Phew. they're just giving us money to buy up the world's assets. just They're throwing money and shoving it in my mouth. Here, Mr. Investor, go buy more assets. Go own more assets and real estate and become wealthier and wealthier and wealthier and wealthier and control a larger and larger and larger percentage of our society's net worth. Right? Now, this all could end. You guys could all vote in socialism tomorrow. And tomorrow, everything you own could be taken away. You could be a wealth tax. They can take your money away from you. An income tax. There could be all kinds of massive taxes laid on you. You know, they could take your health care away from you. They can do all these terrible things to you. But the reality is, even when you start taking money away from rich people, they're still richer than you. 
And they will find ways to get around that. They will leave their money hidden in different companies and corporations in different countries. They will move their money around. They'll put their money into larger personal assets. It can't be taken away from you. They will end up with more money than you. So why not be one of us? We'll take a short break. Be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Welcome back. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. Today, we're discussing uh, hindsight's 2020 and why have you not started investing in real estate when everybody else that has any common sense has and is making millions and millions of dollars of doing it. And is that going to continue? And yes, it is. And the proof is in the pudding. And if you listen to this whole podcast, you'll get all the answers you need. This last one, we're going to go into this last point I want to make here is that rental housing is so much in demand right now. And... The investors so much want to be in that business that very, very large construction companies have decided to get into the rental business. Now, for years, a construction company, the builders, they make their money by building the property and selling it to someone, suspected buyer, who pays too much for it. And really, they're underwater the day they buy the house because the builder made $100,000, $200,000 on the house. Nowadays, there's such small margins in selling these houses because it's so expensive to build a house that there's really no real gain that way anymore. But there's massive gain in two things. One, rental income. And two, appreciation over years of time. These things are going up in value so quickly that they want a part of it. So here's an article by the Dallas Morning News that says the new rental home community in the works for McKinney is part of a national trend. Builders and investors are constructing single family rentals to meet growing demand. $30 million residential project which will have 125 homes as part of a nationwide trend toward rental single family home development. Goes on and says investors have snapped up thousands of moderate and low-cost houses for rentals but the fewer homes on the market and rising purchase costs many players are now looking to build their own investment rental properties we have been buying and assembling a portfolio of residential properties around the u.s for about 11 years hansen said we've also been buying and rehabbing in apartment communities hansen said he and his investors already have 45 rental houses in dfw alone uh, this McKinney project is the first of 10 we plan, he said. We have four other sites around the country. Hansen said each of these new homes will have backyards and will share some neighborhood amenities. Expect to see more of this type of development in the North Texas and other major cities. We're hearing quite a bit about it, expected quite a bit of it take over here in Dallas and Fort Worth. Then it goes on and says that Arizona-based developer Nextro Metro Communities has already built three successful rental communities in Grand Prairie, McKinney, and Plano. The Avila projects have one, two, and three-bedroom homes plus community center with a pool. The homes in the company's newest uh, community in Grand Prairie start at $1,300 a month. Next Metro Communities has acquired, zoned over 10 other sites. Um, he says, not everyone wants to live in an apartment. Wilson said some of the U.S. major home builders, including Toll Brothers, Taylor Morrison, are working on plans, such plans. The big companies like Lennar and Horton are paying attention as well and may be interested in doing something in future years. So there it is, folks. The big boys have come to roost into my business. 30 years ago, nobody wanted a part of all what we're doing. We could buy a house for $10,000. We could buy a house for twelve, fifteen thousand. We could buy one for thirty. Then we could buy one for forty, and then we'd have to pay fifty. And eventually, we had to pay sixty, and then we had to pay seventy, and then we had to pay eighty. Then we had to pay a hundred, and then we had to pay one hundred ten and one hundred twenty. And we're still buying houses around one hundred ten, one hundred twenty thousand dollars that are worth probably two hundred thousand. So we're still buying houses at discounts, and we're still getting. You know, we buy them at a discount, we renovate them, we put them back on the marketplace, but not to sell, but to rent. And we make positive cash flow. And as I showed you, you know, 
Twenty million dollar gain on a six hundred thousand dollar investment. Now I got a guy right now that I just got an email from who's putting together a project that's forty three million dollars. That's one guy doing one project that's forty three million. Those builders just did a thirty million dollar project, right? Thirty million. This guy's doing forty million. They're doing one hundred twenty five units. He's doing four hundred and fifty units. Wow. An individual Lifestyles member putting together a project bigger than these big boys. And one, no. Five, no. Ten, more. Hundreds and hundreds of deals are done with Lifestyles members. Small ones for beginners. Medium size, larger size, and super size. We've got them all. Just depends on, you know, how long these people have been members here and what they've accumulated as far as uh, net worth, ability, skill set, and other partners to work with them. So the bottom line is, is that we are a part of this growing interest, and we will, 20 years from now, as a group, have a better net worth than almost everybody out here listening on this radio show that's not a member. That's just a fact. You say, well, it's an opinion. Okay. You believe it to be an opinion. I believe it to be a fact because I've already seen it happen. Every 10 years for 30 years, I've seen people become massively wealthy. I've gone through not three generations in 30 years, but six generations of families that started. And like every five years, we'll get their kids. So, you know, a guy comes in, joins, gets rich. By that time, his kids are becoming adults. We get them in, they get rich. You know, the next generation that came in after them, they become rich, they bring their kids in. And so we have half generations. And so people come in, you know, on these groups of people. And it's, it's, it's weird because all this stuff cycles. It's cyclical as into when the stock market crashes and people go, oh, my God, now i got to go find Dell. I've heard him on the radio for years. I just never did anything. Now, when I lose money in the stock market, now I understand what he's saying. Or I lose my job or whatever other thing that is the trigger for you to realize that you listening to this radio show for the last one week, one month, one year, 10 years was for a reason. It was because you needed to hear what you're hearing so that when that trigger point hits you, you're ready to take action and get over here and do something that I've been over here teaching for 30 years. Hey, we're in a physical location, actually four physical locations around the country. We're real. You can't say that about all the Midnight Madness people out there talking to and teaching you about money. We are real, and we have been around. Those are good, solid reasons for conservative people to look into us, realizing that it's really not all about the money. Now, it's not just money. It's the quality of lifestyle. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station, its affiliates, its management, or advertisers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.